It's said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them, from the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient to the ultra modern. It's our job to bring these stories to you, direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. I'm Joey Catanzaro, and we are rediscovering China. Wild elephant numbers are falling globally, but the number in China is on the rise. How come? And why are people dying as a result? We go to Yunnan to find out. In a place where fields meet rainforest, deep in the wild heart of China's Yunnan province, there's a battle underway to save something precious from disappearing forever. But it's a fight that's causing unexpected casualties. Ma, 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 ma. Yunnan is home to China's only population of wild Asian elephants. Most of them live here in Shishongbana close to Myanmar, Laos and Vietnam. This is the place where their survival or extinction will be decided in China. I've been called up to China's front line for elephant conservation. Yunnan's Wild Elephant Rescue Center opened about a decade ago to save and ideally rehabilitate sick and injured elephants. This is their smallest resident. She represents a big achievement in the bid to bring this endangered species back from the brink. Oh, 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 oh. Good girl. Oh. This is Young Nu. She's a one-year-old Asian elephant and like any youngster, she likes to play. Hers is an incredible tale of survival, but she's part of an even bigger story that's unfolding here in China's Yunnan province. At a time when the number of elephants around the world is declining, the number of elephants here in China is actually on the rise. Less than 50,000 wild Asian elephants are left across the continent. Their numbers have halved since the beginning of the 20th century. But the writing's not on the wall yet. The number of wild elephants in China has almost doubled over the past two decades, albeit only to roughly 300. The rescue center is part of a conservation plan which includes protection for millions of hectares of rainforest. Poaching here is now punishable by death. Nine elephants call this rescue center home. We're about to meet Shong Ba, one of the people referred to affectionately here as an elephant dad, and he's going to introduce us to one of his daughters. About 10 years ago, Run Run was found locally in a pretty bad way. Her left hind leg had been caught in a hunter's trap, a relic from the bad old days when poaching was still rampant in China. But with a little love and a lot of care, she's made somewhat of a recovery. Can you tell us a little bit about Run Run's daily routine? As you can see, she's, she's still a wild animal. Um, <coughs> And these, these animals do demand respect. They're as beautiful as they are. I don't know anything about elephant body language. I don't know. She looks a little bit agitated. It, she also looks like she's dancing. Can you tell me what that, that's all about? 
，二三，一，二三，反正他在这里的时候，呃，自然的形成了一种打发时间的一个我们中国叫的慢三，一个舞步。Despite my misgivings, Shong insists Ran Ran is happy. He points to a 2015 visit by British royal and wildlife advocate Prince William as a sign what's being done here is legitimate. But at the time, activists pointed out that right next door to the rescue centre is a place where elephants perform for tourists, and it's owned by the same company. Prince William actually came here. Tell us what that was like. Uh, 去年的三月四号，呃，威廉王子呢来到了我们亚洲县总园繁育及救助中心。当时是我和我的楠楠一起接待着他。在他没有来之前，我相信他也是和其他的一些外国人一样想的。中国人喜欢象牙，对大象可能不怎么的。但是当他来到实地考察了之后。It's time for Ren Ren's morning walk. Shong tells me it's forest training designed to ready the elephants for release. But Ren Ren, the first elephant brought to the centre, is still here about a decade on. Oh! Do you think there's a possibility that you'll send Ren Ren back? To the forest, back to the wild. He is here. He doesn't need to go out to hunt for food. He can eat whatever he wants. So, if he gets to the wild, he will not be hungry. He will be fed. 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 过来了没有敌意？你说那么大的一头象突然冲到我家来，我肯定也怕，有可能就会发生冲突。It's bath time with a young rescue bull named Xiao Chang. 他们每天都要一起洗澡啊，尤其大象呢是非常喜欢水的一种动物。The illegal trade in ivory from poaching is still rife in China, despite harsh penalties. What's happening here may not wash away all sins, but it feels like a start. Across Asia, only an estimated 15% of the elephant's traditional range remains. Habitat destruction is now a bigger threat to their survival than poaching. On paper, about 2.8 million hectares of Yunnan's rainforest is protected. But officials admit land is being illegally cleared, and every extra hectare of farmland means one less of natural habitat for hungry elephants. More elephants, less land. It's causing an escalating conflict. Out in Shishong Banar's remote sugarcane country, in two villages, elephants are destroying lives. It might look peaceful and idyllic from here, but Mong Ah and Mong Wang are effectively villages under siege. When the elephants arrived in this region about two years ago, locals were initially excited, but then people started dying. Ten people have been killed by wild elephants in this region over the past two years. More than one million dollars worth of crops and property have been destroyed. These, you see. 全部都是我们老百姓的这些农地啊，大象呢就在这些地方经常出没了。These forestry officials are conducting what's become a daily patrol for wild elephants. It speaks to how effective reconnaissance here has literally become a matter of life and death. Ni hao. Uh, could you tell us whereabouts we're heading now? The elephant patrol takes me to a farm less than 10 minutes drive from the village centre. Nowhere here is safe, and this is the scene 
of a recent attack. The patrol is checking in on Shu Mei. This farm has been her home since 1982. Hers is a simple life, dictated by seasons and soil. She has three adult sons, all of them married, all of them now moved away. She used to share this home with her husband, Ju Xiaobao, until the night the elephants came searching for food. A few months ago, the elderly couple that owned this farmhouse were warned there were wild elephants in the area and they evacuated to the village. But at some point in time in the early evening, the elderly farmer became worried about his home and his crops and he returned here. He was actually sleeping in this bed when at some stage during the night, an elephant literally burst through this wall. You can see where it's been hastily patched up. The old man panicked, he ran outside, he encountered the rest of the herd and he was trampled to death. What's driving the increasing amount of conflict between elephants and humans here in Yunnan province? The hunters' traps are gone, but they've been replaced by rubber plantations, which cover about a quarter of Shishong Bana. It's causing problems. In recent years, there has been some conflict between villages and, and, and wild elephants. What would you say to the villagers, maybe, to change their mind about any negative impressions they might have of elephants here. Walk 我种下去一片专家，有的人可能一年到头就是守着这一片专家来过日子，那你来了把我全部吃掉了，那我怎么办？An adult Asian elephant can stand three meters tall, weigh five tons, and run up to forty kilometers per hour. Wang Chao Shen knows how deadly they can be. This is my dog, Wang Jibao. Ah, dead. He's been killed. Your brother was the first person in this village to be killed by wild elephants. Tell us what happened. Outside Mong Ah village, the fields are eerily deserted. The farmers can't work when the elephants are close. No one compensates them for lost time. We're on our way to visit his older brother's tomb. It's a fair trek into the mountains and a a fair whack away from the village. We've been warned not to come here. There are wild elephants in the area and the signs are everywhere. It's not safe, but at Chao Shen's urging, we press on. A few hundred meters climb further up the mountain. We reach the tomb, which turns out to be a humble patch of dirt beneath a tree. Uh, need a Google map? Uh, Google. 
Mm. Uh, Jago? Uh, uh, okay. Mm. We've reached his brother's resting place. They buried him where they found him. But we're not going any further because we've just encountered an incredibly fresh elephant track. Uh, they've definitely been through here very recently, and it's time to go. Are people here scared? I have to admit, I'm certainly a little bit nervous right now. Mm. So given what's happened to you, do you now hate elephants? Would you, would you kill the elephant that killed your brother if you had the chance? We press him again. What sort of compensation do villagers get after one of these incidents? The elephant patrol is on the move again. It's not safe to get close to these creatures. Every year for the past decade, an average of $290,000 has been paid out in Shishong Bana for the damage done by elephants. The farmers refer to this as financial aid, refusing to call it compensation because the figure is so far below the actual damage done to their livelihoods. The best solution here is still prevention. It's too risky for people to get close to the elephants. Instead, the patrol deploys 15 drones every day. When the elephants are spotted, villagers are notified by an early warning system comprising text messages, loudspeaker announcements and posters. It can't save crops, but it can save lives. There's no sign of the elephants right now, and for the villagers, that's a good thing. A couple of days ago, though, it was a totally different story. This is the herd of wild elephants believed to be responsible for the killings here. There are calves among them, a promising sign for conservation, but bad news for villagers, because protective adults are more aggressive. The elephants are still close. Another patrol has spotted them moving back in this direction. These are local people hired by the Forestry Bureau. They're currently putting up posters to warn residents that there are elephants in the area. Why do you think the number of elephants has actually doubled in Yunnan in the past two decades? What sort of challenges do you foresee ahead? It's taken as a given here that more people will die, but the patrols are doing all they can to stop that occurring. Evacuations like this now happen daily. What's the government doing to address these challenges in terms of elephant conservation and the conflict with villages?
The message here is loud and clear. The danger is real. Yet, as night falls, they employ the oldest defence to keep wild things at bay, fire. All the protective measures weren't enough to save Nant War's eldest son, another villager in Mangwang, trampled to death. <laughs> The centre all these elephants call home is part of Wild Elephant Valley, primarily a tourism venture opened in 2005 by state-owned company Golden Peacock. This is where Young New sleeps. But right now, it's lunchtime. This is her dad, Wang Wu. He's been taking care of her since she was found in 2015 near Pua City, wandering alone, starving and suffering from an infection. <laughs> because young Nu was orphaned at such an early age, the keepers here at the Elephant Rescue Centre had to improvise. The solution was goat's milk, and she's drinking about 30 litres of it every day. The centre was unable to save two elephants. They never want that to happen again. The staff at the Elephant Rescue Centre are recreating Ran Ran's rescue 10 years ago. They say it serves as good practice for future rescues of this type. The old hunter's trap that snared Ran Ran's leg bit through to the bone. Without help, she would have died. She and the other eight elephants here are only alive because of the rescue centre, and it's funded by tourism. Roughly 1.5 million tourists visited Wild Elephant Valley in 2016. Ticket sales brought in about $100 million last year. This doesn't include the flow-on benefits to the local economy. There's no doubt elephant conservation efforts here in Yunnan have produced some incredible results. But what's happening here is not entirely free of controversy. Right next door to the Elephant Rescue Centre is a place where the elephants are made to perform tricks for tourists. We've been told we're not allowed to go in there. In fact, we're not even allowed to stand outside the gate and film. We are allowed to film their forest walk though. Wild elephant country it may be, but we don't see any. We do catch a glimpse of a rare white-cheeked gibbon. It's hard to be certain what sort of monkey business, if any, is going on here. No one wants to talk on camera, but behind the scenes, we're told the complicated web of operations here is all about the greater good. The performing elephants are from Laos, or they're ex-zoo animals, depending on who you talk to. The tourism money on tap here is important. 
It means more service sector jobs, less reliance on farming and consequently the possibility of reduced territorial disputes between elephants and humans. China is determined to conserve and protect these magnificent creatures and for Yang Nu, this means she now has a chance of being released when a balance between development and conservation has been achieved.